Look at that for a sunset. Oh, it's gorgeous. Welcome to Frankie's Speed Shop. going to be pretty raw, unedited. I'm going to try and not edit as uh, as much as I normally do, do like a 20 minute video. This is going to be a full start to finish video. So hopefully I can get it down to about an hour, but we'll go through absolutely everything. Um, and I'll tell you what else as well, I'm not even going to put the heat on in my booth. So we'll si simulate this kind of like if you've got a garage at home, or you know, some space in your workshop, something along those lines. I mean, we've got to use our extraction, you know, by law anyway, with our filters and whatnot. But I'm going to keep this as raw as I can. So you can see what we do start to finish. So the first thing is obviously we've got dents to repair, but before that, we've got to get a pen. We've got to go around the entire car and just mark everywhere we see a ding, a dent, while we've got some normal natural daylight. Right, so there it is. Mazda MX-5 or Miata as it's called over in the States. Nothing special. Dad's done a lot of the work, so he took the lights out, plates off, glasses all out, roof is off, interior kind of stripped. You don't necessarily need to do that, but I think, you know, took all the door cards and everything off, saves it getting messy. Light front lights are out. Uh, we've got to take those off. Because obviously, you know, we don't want any bridging on there, and it's got some on the back, so we've got to take those off. Front bumpers, we're gonna probably pop them out. If I'm honest, uh, we don't eh, we don't really need to do it because I'm gonna put it up on axle stands in the booth, so I can get right underneath everywhere. But they're simple, so we'll probably take those off, take the back bumpers off, so badging and everything's all off. So, you can see, if you look down the side, you can see it's, you know, the peely, there's some dings in it. So, right, so there's a ding there. So what we'll do, first thing we've got to do, is now it's all stripped, you want to take as much off the car as possible for two reasons. You don't want any bridging from the clear coat, and also, it saves a lot of masking. By the time you've spent masking all your lights and stuff, just pop them out. So, uh, okay, damage. Big, big old dent right there. The bonnet is a double skin bonnet, obviously, so we, we don't have stud pullers yet. They are on the list, but we don't have them yet, so we'll use some Evercut products on that. Any remainders of uh, glue, whatnot, we'll use caramel wheels. I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, mirrors are in there to be painted. Aerials out. So that's it. Nothing extravagant right so we need to go from this angle and you want to try and hit it in the natural light and just look down at the panel and see we've got there there shit kind of all around there really so that's fine so mark those up <coughs> excuse me and then move about as well don't stand still move about move back and forth in and out the light and you can see there is one there and nope nope that's it right there that's it and we move further back there's another one there uh, there's a cluster there Okay, uh, I don't think there's any on the boots, nope, okay and then the same with this one, oh, got a big one there, again walk down the side of the car, 
it's any sort of dings or dents. I think this, this door's okay. But just be thorough. Okay. And then down to the wing. Nope, okay, we're good. Obviously, we don't need to mark that one because we can see that a mile off. There's also, where was it? There, see? So we don't need to mark this one because, let's face it, we can see that a mile off. And we know it needs attention. So, we need to prep all this for body work and we're going to hit it, just go straight to it with 80 grit. No point fuck assing about. Um, and we'll probably use, we'll use the easy sand. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. One there. Whenever you see them, just mark them up. You can see it's all faded and looks shitty. <clears throat> you probably could sand it down and re-clear, but I don't like doing that shit. And why do that when a son owns a body shop? <laughs> it's fucking stupid. So bumper is now off because that's the easiest way to sort this man. Um, screws all back in so we had a little dip right there so we just panel beated give it a little love nudge up so now all we got to do there's no other dings or dents so we just got to take care of this area and this tiny tiny little ding right there see so we're going to mix up a little bit of easy sand because really that's kind of all we need for that. We'll give it a lovely little skim. We'll get the DA under here, make sure this is all prepped. Wipe it off and then give it a skim. Block it and then what we'll do you see is we'll go and we'll check all the arches all around, sand all this down. Make sure, sorry, make sure there's no rust coming through or anything. So say so thanks dad for cleaning it. Mmm, yummy. Right, so that's our quartz degreaser silicon remover we use. Oh god, music! Screw you, YouTube! See? You remind me of a girl I used to bum. You're broken. You're broken. So I've just wiped this. Okay. I've just wiped this with um, some degreaser. Uh, like I said, there's my easy sand. I'm going to get yelled at again. <sighs> I always get yelled at for using cardboard, but I'm still awaiting on me thingy me jigging me bob. A couple of grits, 120, 180, 3M stuff. We are going to block um, the car. That may sound silly. But we're going to get the big flat sander, we're going to 180 the entire car because we're going to be priming this and blocking this and doing this right. We're not just going to be 500 in it and then throwing a bit of paint on. No, we're not. This is going to be perfect. This is my inheritance. I mean, this is my stepmom we're talking about. <laughs> oh, I know. She loves me. Can't believe it's taken her this long to let me bloody paint something. It's nuts. I know. Right, so we don't need a lot, literally. A drizzle, I like that, that's it. Of the Everco Easy Sand. Make sure this hardness mixed. This stuff you'll, this stuff just goes on so nice. Fucking applies, it applies like absolute porn. Yep, so nice fun. dollop of the old hardener. Kev, I'm sorry I'm on cardboard, but I haven't got a mixing board, I'm still waiting for one. So literally, and this will it, this will be dry in like under 10 minutes. This will be dry and we'll be sanding. See, make sure we're all mixed, which we are. Lovely, right. I don't know where I'm going to rest you, lot. There we go. You can't really see much. 
I'd just like to thank Dickies again because I'm wearing my new trousers today. Okay, so literally a little dollop. It's just like he's not travelling far enough. And wet it out. Okay. Just wet oh, it yeah, out. Is it adjustment on the pedal? Like so, yeah, we're all prepped under there. I just wanted to make sure that we're prepped under there. And literally, we'll curl the, the spreader. And I'm going to put a little bit. Like that. Literally, like that, that's all we're doing. Easy as that. Uh, and then the same with this piece up around there because the arch has got a slight curve to it. So we're going to smooth it out like so. Like that. And that looks relatively good. I can't get in there to. Oh shit. It did look relatively good. Right, as you can see guys, it is now... Oh, come on, focus, focus. I've actually, focus. yeah, but I've got other stuff to do. I ain't gonna stand there while it goes off, like a goon. It, it's 6.51 p.m. And we're so long that it takes us to go off. Right, so, caramel wheel. For anything like this, all right, and stickers and residue, use a caramel wheel. And, oh God, they smell amazing. So, literally, I'm gonna try and do this one-handed. God, this is so difficult. Hang on. There we go. And that's that off. And Jay's happy. Why is Jay happy? I'm a tool. I know you're at all. What did you forget to do? I didn't forget. What did I just admitted a bit of obvious information. <laughs> <laughs> it has been awesome since uh, we opened as Frankie's Speed Shop. We have had nothing but fun. We've worked some late, long ass nights, but we go home smiling every single day, which is worth it, in my opinion. Right, that's that done. And now, that's that done. Dude, what's the time? Really? That's ready. Yeah. That's done. Four minutes. Yeah, what? Four minutes? Wow. Wow. Evercoat stuff is good. I didn't even put a lot of hardener in that. Damn. Okay. <laughs> All right. Put that gasket in there. Um, I want to do other bits before I, before I get to that. Um, DA 80 grit, which I've got. Uh, and let's go and tackle. Oh, yeah. Uh, where it is? What you? Uh, uh, right, we're gonna get that done now. Right, so uh, literally just buzz some eighty around there. Make sure that's all good. There is. There's no rust on that. So now we want one eighty, one twenty. I mean, we could go straight to one eighty with this, to be honest. But Kurt, can you go and grab me the uh, guide coat, please? Thank you. Right, so literally. Right, so 
There's the little things that we can see. <laughs> Absolutely, so minute, it's unreal. So, they're going to be okay. I mean, it's, it's two pack paint basically, direct gloss paint. So, which is why when you sand it, you get nothing but colour because it's direct gloss. Um, it's a very, very thick, cheap paint, direct gloss. So, you know, but it's perfect for like, you know, commercial stuff. I don't, Never really do direct gloss on old cars or bikes. Work stuff. Oh look, the old Bill again. Doing something useful again. Like fucking annoying us again. Right. Anyway, so that's pretty much dry. So what we're going to do now is we're going to start 180ing the rest of this with the big flat sander, and we'll see what happens. I'm going to just use my um, CP flat sander this thing is a beast with the 3M 180 we're sticking with 180 we're not gonna faff, faff about and we'll, uh, we'll time lapse all of this but crisscross motions make sure you wear a Quick and easy as that with that big old thing. So everything's nice and smooth. I mean, I've got to go in here a little bit more because it dips. Same there with the dip. But you can see it's going to be crazy flat. These bits down here, I'll DA. This is like a stone chip. So I'll DA, DA those. I'll pop the wheel back on because that repair is now done and fine <clears throat> and then we'll move on to the door right I'm gonna time-lapse all of this because you're not gonna want to friggin see it but I'm gonna go ahead and 180 on the big flat sander all around here all around here the other door and all the other bits and bobs I'm just gonna biz around it all with the 180 you can see how quick it did this quarter it's gonna do that just as quickly and blah 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 Okay, door pretty much done, uh, just a little bit across the bottom, but of course we've got a little indentation here that the flat sander picked up, and a little ding there. So again, we'll mix up a little bit of easy sand, just give that a very, very minute skim there and there. The doors were good, and then obviously we'll move on to the uh, front wing, I'll put a new pad on, to go over the quarter panel again, go over the door again. It's not quite there, nearly, but not quite. So easy signs. Yeah, even moving really back and look, start. But we do what we gotta do. If there's a company in the UK that happens to make light bars, okay, I wanna run a load here, like pretty much down this side and down, making me for this type of application, especially when we're colour sanding as well. So if you make light bars, get in touch, because you kind of need some. Right, this big, nasty, fucking dent. Now, I managed to straighten it out from underneath, because it was it sort of did that. So I've straightened that out best I can. And now we've got to put a skim on it. Um, if I had a stud puller, then I'd do that, but I don't, so I've got the next best thing. This is Evercoat Ultra Light. Now you don't see us use this very often, but when I say this is a light tub of body filler, 
It is, and that's full. Now you can mix this with the easy sand and get yourself a custom filler if you wish, all right? So I'm gonna use it on there because this stuff is fucking incredible when it comes to stiffness. It's like so damn good. Right, hang on. Right, so I don't need a lot. Oh God. Yeah, I did that stupid. Right. So like with most, bloody hell, the body fillers. Oh, okay, I should have got a bigger cut of cardboard. There we go. This stuff is, fuck, is incredible. I can't stress that enough. For stuff that's got like big footings or, or deeper footings, this is the stuff you want to use. Um, it's not as creamy, um, and you know it's it's a proper uh, like you know what I mean. I would say I'd compare it to Easy One, but it just it fucking annihilates anything Upol make. If I'm honest, and I used I used Upol for years. Oh, I'm turning into carrot. Look. All right. Oh God, I'm making a right mess. I've mixed up way. Oh shit. I've mixed up way too much. <laughs> right, so, like with all body filler, make sure you wet it out. The area that you need to do, okay? And you, excuse me. And you can see this stuff is grainy. But that's okay. It's absolutely fine. But yeah, it's just very important that you wet everything out. Okay. Shit. Okay. Big old flat skim on that bad boy. Um, obviously I fucked up and put too much hardener in. So I had to sand that down and do it again. So, uh, we're gonna go a little bit coarser. We're going to hit this with 120 because we don't need anything more and you'll see how easy this sands down so let me get set up that's obviously all dry ready to go down that down right forgot to start the video okay got my guide coat i anticipate to give this another skim um just because I don't like layering it up, layering it up. Oh fuck. Got to build it up. Buttercup baby, won't you let me down? Aya! Aya! Well, as you can tell, it's day two. Ah! Sand that down, that's the Everco Ultralight on that. Kirk's just 180 in the, uh, the bumpers now. Put the caramel wheel to the back here. And got the sticky labels off. So we've got that one to do. That one's ready. We've got some little spats over here that we took off as well. So they're all just prepped and sanded. Um, and Jay's come back with some goodies. Oh! Let's go and see what Jay's up to. Like I said, I'm not going to edit a lot of this. This is going up. If it's an hour long, it's an hour long. Oh, boring. Oh, start to finish, Frank. Oh, that shit, yeah. Yeah, start to finish. This is his new toy that he broke, that he already broke. Literally, he had a week. And broke it. Well, yeah. <laughs> I didn't break it. Augusta wins. So it's 
flying into a pork rabbit, a steel pork rabbit, and break it. Yeah, I just helped it. I was just piloting it at the time. Made for a good video. It was <laughs> this we want to use when we like when we get a car in. We'll uh, film it before and after. We'll do a little fly around. When I've got my pilot's license. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> we can do a nice before and after. Over the top, underneath, around it. I still want to try it in the booth. Couple of the rolly shots. Mike wants to get into the booth, but I think the downdraft will cause him issues with his paint movement. But we'll try it on the bumper and see what happens, because I reckon it makes cool We'll try it on the whole next slide. Yeah, yeah. Something on the next slide. Yeah, exactly. Sight, no scrap off. I don't actually want to do basically, you've got to replace the body, because the camera is part of the body, and the camera helps it position itself in flight. So you break the camera, you break the whole thing, and you've got to replace the whole body. Um, I've never done it before. Is everything glued in? Uh, no, this is screwed on, but there's lots of wires. I kind of need... Wow. I'm a little bit out of the depth here. Oh, there we are, they're all unplugged. There's a ribbon there that goes somewhere. Oh god. So presumably, uh, <clears throat> carbon fiber arms and blades and whatnot, so that's why that lot didn't break. Pulls out there like that. Look what's working again! Yeah, look at you, look at me! See why that can go in the booth? Look at that, that can go in the booth, definitely. Feel the downdraft from it though. Yeah, but... Well, I'm gonna bring you, that's the problem. It sets the high based on what's underneath it. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, but if that stays around the back of the boot... Yeah, but... You do that, it automatically lifts. Oh no, it's not doing it. Don't do it. There we go. Oh look, there's the Mazda Rati. Precision flight, here we go. Oh fucking, I've got... Right, I'm filming this. Ah! Oh, oh. Yeah! <laughs> that's it, he's happy now, rest of the day, that's him. He's done. <laughs> That is amazing. I'm so glad it's working now. What a wicked thing. Right, he's off out. Anyway, let's go, Kurt. Let's see where we're at. Right. I think we're finished. Well, no, a little bit. You can... Oh, oh, that... that's nice. There's a little indentation there where we got to put a little tiny skin because it was, um, obviously when it was smacked, bumped up but you can see look there is fuck all kipper in that that's a tiny skip we had a nice area like this and then we're smoothing it in line with what's already there so when this is our natural guide coat the body work around it and then we just use our normal guide coat in the middle so we've got to do literally there a tiny tiny skim right there that's going to be good to go. Also, if you look underneath, see how straight that is as well. See? So we'll do a little skim of the Easy Sand again. Uh, sorry, not the Easy Sand. The Ultra Light. This is a 180 finish. You can see it's still slightly grainy, but that's good enough that. We'll use the 440 Express over that and we'll be ready for primer. Where are you at? Uh, if you want to put a bit of uh, Easy Sand in there, little tiny dent there. Oh, okay. That, that won't sand out, so... Yeah, we better uh, put something just, in there as well. Just in there and I'll just sand that straight. Fine. So, you've got to wipe all this off and whatnot, and yeah. that'd be good to go. Right, so you've seen me mix it, you've seen me skim it, you're not going to need to see me do it again. Oh, the radio, right? Hey, oh, 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 oh. come back to you in a minute. Oh, 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 oh. That is awesome. Fucking eye that thing is. That's only halfway up his back. Nice. No way. He's doing his little backflips. Look at him with his backflips, man. I know this is how to paint your car, but you know, this is some cool shit. So, things fast as fuck. 
I want to see how high it goes. <laughs> Let's see if we can get some footage on that. Oh my god. Drifting now. Right, and that's what I mean there. So I've done a cheeky little bat mask all across there. That's now ready to prime. What we'll do then is we'll remove the mask in and then we'll scuff inside. All right, do that for all your primed areas, really. Same with all the door shuts and everything. We'll, we'll do the same as that. And then we'll scuff into it. With, we got some proper 3M scuff blend and scuff finish. So to create that seamless look. And you won't, you won't, you won't see where the paint's been at all. And that's the beauty of all of this. So Kurt's just going around with the caramel wheel again and getting the glue off. Now, what we're gonna do with this is we're gonna soft edge it all the way around, mask off of that, no risk of bridging. Some more sand in there, and we'll be ready to blow all this off. Primer will 
now cover in one coat and no mapping, no sinking, you're good to go. Okay, booth is on, wiped down. We've done our 440 Express and so now it's time for primer and two types of primer because we've got some raw plastic that's on display and obviously we want to mix our normal high bill. So first things first, plastic primer. I'll just grab my little SRI because that's perfect for this. And it's back. Plastic adhesion primer there. It's 1K. You pour it in and you go and spray it in the booth. It's that simple. Okay, my phone ran out of memory, so I had to go and sort that out. Um, I've already been in my little SRI Pro Light and laid the dupe on adhesion promoter. So we are on the primer, yes, Rich? Everything you do is greatness. <laughs> I piss excellence and you shit awesomeness. I do indeed. That's <laughs> why I work here. Yes, he and is. not other Dorset based paint companies. Ooh. And that legend is single, ladies. And he's got a massive cock, from what I hear. Anyway, <laughs> right, so we're on the quartz primer, red base coat, so we're using a white primer, uh, four to one. Not much reduction, maybe about 5%. You've seen me mix this a million times on all my other videos, so it's no different. We're not reducing this that much. So we are mixed thoroughly. Now we're going to be filtering this into my PRI, which is rare. That's a 1.8 PRI. And we're going to filter that in. Can you tell I'm in the middle of like cleaning all my guns and everything? That's because this is, like I said, this is an evening job. The things you do for family. So I'll filter that into there and my gun has a filter as well. I'll get masked up and then we'll go in. Okay, so we're all wiped down, we're all tacked off, I'm going to be at, well when I connect this up, <laughs> I'll be at about 2.2 bar, and I'm not going to say, you know, do 50% over like that, you can't just watch and get a feel for how your product lays. So we're going to do the filler area first, and then we're going to go over the whole thing. I'll time lapse it, um, well in fact you guys might want to see it. So, let's see if I can put you anywhere. I might be able to actually come over here. We're all tapped down. We're all ready to rock and roll. Primer's in here. Uh, with the tap rags, I like to open up tap rags and I'll leave them for, for a while. And I like to open them fully, throw them up, and scrunch them. So that's what we've done. Plastic primer's been done. So now we're ready to hit the normal primer. We're going to be about 2.2 bar with this gun. Uh, Yeah, on one big sort of yeah. 
one big semi, semi wet, well, not even semi wet. You just need it to like, literally dust cover, I reckon, and it'll be fine. Right, we're good. Right, let's get this laid. Right. Good, that went down. How smooth. <gasps> like glass. Oh, that's hot. <laughs> yeah, money. Oh, like? Fucking like silk, my friend. No way. Like fucking silk. Oh, so nice. It's so warm as well. I'm trying to just warm my hands up because that's quite nice. Right. So we're gonna get out. Get it out. Uh, we're not gonna demask just yet. Well, we'll demask some bits, but not all of it. And then we're going to start sanding down. So, oh, sanding down then, Matthew. I think we'll run over it all with some 400 on soft. a block, soft yeah. pad. Soft pad on a yeah, block. Yeah, on a block. Get the majority of the loose and thicker stuff off. <clears throat> going to hit it with wet six. It's wet six. Wet six, yes, wet six nice and flat, crisscross patterns. I'll move this. Uh, can you tell we hit a body in here? Look. Oh. God, you would not want to be in this booth when it fucking starts baking. I can assure you of that. So we're also, check out our other video. We're uh, going to be doing Kurt's custom flake on his roof tonight. Because we've got tomorrow off. <laughs> yes. So we're like, fuck it. And I've just been out and uh, 
it's a beautiful evening hang on let me show you let me show you oh yeah money oh look at that see it smells fresh it smells awesome and we love it here at Frankie's Speed Shop so oh look he's all sanded down Ooh, ready for some primer right let's get the uh, MX5 out Oh, you can't just, you can't get the full. Right, so we're back in the booth. Like I said, we fizzed over with four and then wet sanded with six. You can see we're all lovely and straight. I uh, had to redo a little bit of work on the bonnet and just put a spot prime in there. So that is mint. That's absolutely bloody bob on now. So I'm, uh, yeah, I'm well happy with that now. So we've got to get shit masked. And what we got is, there's my razor blade. Look at that fucker, they are so sharp. Okay, what we got for this is the 3M soft foam, soft edge foam, scuff pads, they're blending pads, excuse me, some blue roll and some masking tape over there. That is it. Um, I would recommend you do get decent soft edge because if you don't and it comes off, it's gonna look shit. So we're going to clean up all the edges on that side, on that side, we're going to run our soft edge all the way down both. Uh, then we run a string of masking tape down, that stops the soft edge from moving. But first we've got to clean up and uh, get our edges right. So I'm just trying to see if I can place you anywhere. I don't know why there's bolts on the engine. Hiya! <laughs> what are you doing? Are you actually coming to help or what are you doing? The blue roll. Yeah, I'm using the blue roll. Oh, I'm blue roll. Oh, I can't balance this anyway. No, stop it off. I, oh, fuck's sake. Oh, I'm sweating like a fat man in a strip club. Under the car. Where did, where did, you're a fucking tool, you. I know. I mean, you're oh, I might put that booth back on. I'm starting to sweat now. <laughs> Alright, so. That's just sticky pad on. The sticky pad. Take that off. I'll pop it there. So this is all we're gonna do. Just wipe this down. Got a lovely line for where we're gonna put our, uh, our soft edge. So I wanna make sure we're all clean. Uh, all the way. We don't want any dust, crap, or anything coming through. All right. Just gonna make sure because we're gonna come on here with a soft edge. So soft edge foam, you all know, comes in a reel like this. So literally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. no. Okay, and then we just grab a soft edge. See, we kind of don't really have anywhere to go there. So we'll probably mask off of that.
start wiping everything down, ready to paint. All the little trinkets are over there. The bumpers and that are obviously here. I know it's a bit tight, but it needs to get done. It took some time to mask properly, as you can tell. Everything is looking pretty good. Soft edge foam everywhere. The door shuts, you saw all that. All up there, we ran out of plastic sheeting, so we had to do the front with the paper, like so. So as you can see, Kurt is now going over the car and we're wiping down with a silicone remover. Literally to make sure everything is spotless because we don't want any mistakes. Across any of it. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. I don't think so. Considering this MX-5 we started last night, uh, didn't we? About five? No, you started about six. Oh, about six o'clock last night. And then we started again, six o'clock again this night. Tonight, sorry. So, um... We're getting on. Right, mate, there's got to be a storm coming. Cause I'm, look, there's a few flights floating about. There's nothing dirty or anything, so we've got to have a storm coming. Cause it's all humid and clammy. Yeah, I would have seen that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, how many hours have we got into this MX-5 thing? Because Dad stripped it all, so that saved us time. Yeah. Um, uh, we're, we're looking at about 13 and a half, 14 hours in so far. And we're ready for paint. Yeah. Yeah. And and fuck. This, this, <laughs> yeah. And this, this is the colour. Just standard red. Uh, blue roll? Oh, I'll just use this. This is all my... my uh, Someone wanted. Let me just get you there while I go into some mirror for you, mate. Go with me. Um, yeah, so what she wanted. No candy, no flake, no pearls, no anything. Fear, no need to fear. Literally, same colour respray. That's exactly what we're going to do. Except this is clear of a base. Yeah, the other one with direct, yeah, direct gloss. And even though this is just standard colour, no metallics, no pearls, no anything. Is it straight out of the pot ready to mix or is it one to one? My friend, this is still DuPont. Ooh. So it's still three to one. Oh, oh aye, no expense spared. Oh, focus man. No expense spared. Oh, I don't think it's that DuPont 6000 basically? So. It's a nice red, don't get me wrong. <coughs> it is a nice red. It needs a bit brighter. So, DuPont, three to one. Now, while we mix this, oh shit. While we mix this, let's go three to one. Oh god, there we go. It's a nice red, actually, isn't it? I think it's nicer because we're going face coat, clear coat. Yeah. No, she'll flip her fucking shit. She'll have a heart attack. <laughs> she'll put your flake in it. Oh my. No, she'd never trust me again. So I'm pretty sure she'll try and kill you. Yeah. She will. Any reduction? Uh, yes. 10%. 10%. So, just because it's, yeah, it's very, very thick, I want this to flow nice. Okay, so. Um. Right, so while we mix this up, we're gonna get in our paint suits. Uh, we're going through the standard Pro Light. That's set up for this type of thing. The gold booty just here. It's got the TE20 on that one. So, I wonder if this would work through a TE10. Mm. Probably be too fine. I don't know. Yeah. 
The TE20 is a fucking excellent air clip anyway for this. God, it's a, look how well that red covers just going up the sides. Mental. It's DuPont, mate. DuPont and Standox are the best base coats around. Hand like, down. yeah, the reds, I did a test and I sprayed all these different reds on, onto pain glass. Uh, onto, yeah, pain uh, glass and held them up to the sun. So, and it was only DuPont and Sandox that stayed red, the rest turned pink and fucking see through and. Shit, yeah, all sorts. Right, so Kurt, if you would like to go on. Ah, ah. Yeah, baby! I'm happy. I haven't used this old girl in a while. So, um, as you can see over there, perfect fan and everything as normal. We're all set up, we're at about two bar. Wiped everything, tanked everything, cleaned everything, down with the floor, got some heat, we're ready to paint, man. Let's, let's fucking do this! Let's
That VOC clear is absolutely fucking brilliant. Such a good clear cut. I wish I could use it some more. The issue we've got is the overspray doesn't clear from the booth quick enough, so it's hovering, kind of lands back on. So we, I mean, once we buff this, it's going to shine even more. But it's just, you know. Um, it's going to shine even more so that's it for the minute it's not a bad job until the fucking panels are still hot the bones just taken out of the booth so look see all that crisscrossing no wavy panels. <laughs> oh bless it, we're getting there. We're getting there. So tonight we've painted an MX5. I've flaked Kirk's roof. And now <laughs> it's been a while since I've said this. You can't see but the sun is coming up over there. Oh God, what a night. <laughs> right, so I keep forgetting to record. I do apologize. Um, started hitting this with 1500 last night. And because it's, you know, it, I want it perfect. Um, I'm actually on 1500 on a block by hand. So I'm blocking the whole car by hand. Then I'll go 2000 and 3000 and then I'll buff it. And just you fucking just watch the shine. <clears throat> Why do I like doing it by hand? Mm, color sanding and buffing for me is very therapeutic. It, very chilling. Uh, it makes sure that the panel is completely flat, and that's what you're going for. We're only you know we're we're mere beasts when it comes to spraying. So it may look glossy, it may look flat, it may look epic, but it won't be a hundred percent flat. Just the nature of what we do. So, you know, blocking it by hand ensures that it's dead flat and absolutely 100% perfect. Yes, it takes a long time to do it by hand. Yes, it bloody hurts. But if you want it done right, you do it by hand. You know, when you get to like 2000 and 3000, they're not really cutting. They're more of a polishing disc. So they're refining the 1500 scratches, so on and so forth. So that's what we're on. Let me show you what we're using. You kind of already know. Ah, uh, bum 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 bum. Yeah. So, <coughs> excuse me. We use the 3M Velcro, as you know. There, and a simple pressure bottle with water. Nothing else. I never put soap in it. I never put, you know, shit to help your sand and all that. No. Plain water, warm water if you can. You know, any soap, any shit like that. It actually clogs the pads. If you put soap in the water, it actually you know, reduces the cutting capability of your paper. That's why I don't bother with it. Um, and then obviously you've got the Velcro stuff. <clears throat> so I've got it all the way from 600 when we prime uh, up to 1500, which is what I'm using now. 2000, 3000 will be done on a DA, uh, my color sanding one. So let's see if I can get you guys set up. Um, I've got to hit that again. I want to hit both these again. Um, because I think I left mid doing so let's get you set up and basically show you what, what we do right pressure bottle <clears throat> I 
Okay. Nice, hard, solid block. Oh, it's a beautiful morning. The shot always is. And all we're going to do... <coughs> excuse me. Is a full crisscross motion. Clear coat is like this VOC, um, and it's a proper rock solid HS clear. I mean, once we baked this, we baked it for about half hour at 60 degrees, and it's fucking <laughs> like rock solid, like a proper HS clear should be. So, in some instances. You might want to start blocking with 1200. Doesn't hurt. You just got to cut through the top portion of the clear to be able to refine it or start refining it, should I say. Right. 3M2000 on my color sanding DA. You'd be surprised at how far those 2000 grits go as well. You know, I'll use one for this entire car. The 3000s go even further, the Trisax. Right, airline. They're cracking on the door, not the 2000s. So, <clears throat> same exact motion. I only need to make a few passes with this. So we'll just go for a, a new one because I don't know where I'm at with this. All right, they are they are expensive, but believe me, they're worth it. Now, three thousand, obviously, you don't need a lot of water at all. Fire pressure. Yeah, right. That is all at 2000. All the way round. Uh, apart from the boot, which is at three. So this is what you'll end up with. As you can see, it's pretty much like a polished finish. 
So, and this will be this is fucking close. This will be your final sort of check, really. So you go around, make sure you've got any everything you needed to get. Make sure the panels are flat. So uh, get your water. Yeah, this is all done. We'll do this side though, because the light is easier this side. Oh, that water. 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 Proper farm water, like. Fuck it up. Zuma set. So fuck it up. Is that the African coming out in you? <laughs> right. So there. That's what you're left with. Like that, which I mean, you can pretty much see. That's damn near perfect. Shut your cake hole. Like that. That's what you're going for, but you want to be able to move the camera like this, and that is dead straight. That's what you're going for. That's why you're putting the time in, and that's why you're blocking it. All right, now you want to allow a whole day for blocking and buffing. Right, sod it, we're doing it outside. It's a beautiful, beautiful evening. And it's an evening, it's a cool breeze, this isn't direct sunlight. But you can just see how much that's fucking, look at it. There's only one, we've only, you know what I mean? We've done two passes with that, by the way. Which is what I'm gonna show you now. So, we need to get set up. And I'll just quickly run over this with you. Look at that, we can rest you up here on the Hopefully on the wheelie bin. And I can pray to God that it doesn't come off. Let's just make sure you you can see it. I can't see if you can see it. Okay, you can. Right. So, all we're going to do is very, very simple with cutting and buffing. Right. So, I've worked that. So, we're going to work this area here. And you want to do a section at a time. Don't go going ahead of yourselves. All right. Make sure your buffer's on a low speed and it's clean. Um, I think I'm going to, I'll open the door a minute as well. There we go. Oh, look at that for a blend. Right, sorry about that. Yeah, the wind decided to blow it on the floor. Uh, right, let's see how we can do this in a minute. Um, right, there we go, that's even better. As long as that weather doesn't change. I hope it doesn't. I've not buffed outside for ages. Okay, so we're there. Oh, right. Don't change weather. Okay, and what we're going to do is just going to start off at a nice steady speed. Alright. I just want to work. Now I'm pressing quite firmly on this. Like I said, it's a very, very high solid clear, so we've got no worries about burning through. Alright. Work it through. And what you're doing is obviously working it into the panel. This is a water-based compound as well, by the way. Alright. Keep the pressure, and what I do is I don't. This, I adjust the speed by how much I'm pushing most of the time. So just work it right into that panel. Like so. I love water-based compounds. They're brilliant. 
And like you can see the shine coming up, but we're not done. Because you can see the shine coming up, but does that mean the scratches are gone? So we lift off a little bit. And that starts to buff. Alright. Now I'm no Paul Dalton, but we can make this shine. Okay. Right. So now we make our second pass. Alright, like so. Do exactly the same again. Right, so with this pass, we're going to pick the speed up while keeping the pressure down. So we make sure we cut into it and we get it where it needs to be. Don't go crazy fast though, you don't need to. Okay, and now what I do is load, there's loads of compound on there. So clean the pad, like so. Oh shit. I mean, you could just wipe all this off, but I never bother wasting shit. Alright, make sure your pad is clean. And then fast, speed, and start buffing off. Fiber. These are from Auto Perfection and they're brilliant. We got these and we use uh, the, the purple towels and after this we put their uh, ultimate wax over uh, just to finish off. Alright, so you wipe off now. Alright, like so. And then you check in the light, make sure all your swirls are gone. Make sure you've got no scratches. And that's it. It's as simple as that. And if you've gone to 3000 grit like we have, then you're going to get this. You know, good products like DuPont base coats. And you're going to get this. So, I mean, check that shit out for a reflection. So, I mean, we'll wash it and buff it properly, but. You get the general idea. And I've done the entire car with that pad and a bottle of the yellow stuff. So now I'll time lapse the rest of it because, you know, it takes a while.
Right, so this is where we're at. Compounding's done. Now, when we wash down, we use Cherry Divine by Auto Perfect. Focus, you fucker. Oh, I don't want to focus. There we go. Cherry Divine because it's a pH neutral uh, sort of shampoo for the for the cars, and it contains no wax, no nothing. So, literally. We'll go around now with a blowy nozzle, blow it all off, uh, take one of the polishing cloths and just wipe it all down, make sure we're all good, get all the shuts clean, get everything all clean. And then, let's see, look at all that goodness. Oh, we've got some water there. Look at that. That's that's what you're after right there. To the internet. Mm, to the internet. Right, good morning. Um, as you know, last night we finished off by washing and cleaning the car down. Uh, and it was pitch black, we couldn't see shit. So came in this morning and it was obviously pinging like it does. But I feel it just we need to go that extra. We need to we need to do the other compound as well because it's just gonna look insane. And I love all the compounds, the red from quartz is a little bit uh obviously stodgy so what it's just it's a rough cut the yellow you saw us working with yesterday that is a brilliant compound but the finishing compound the, the blue is even better than that because what it does let me show you what it does all right so i've worked this side and what it does see how it sort of turns to water obviously they're water based so it turns to water like that and then it will dry to a haze like that and then you just buff it off now i don't use i, I stopped using the waffle pads wasn't keen on them so i actually use the red pad oh, fucking hell that's hot out um i actually use the red one it's it's slightly firmer than the uh, than the than the old waffle pads but i just feel it gives a better cut and the other thing all three stages do cut even the final finish one I did skip an ever so slight cut so and that's what we want so we're done all this so I've got to do, just do this side now which are time lapse there's no water with this the only water we use is to wash that out so every time I've made a pass say here I'll wash all that out make it all nice and clean move on to the next one clean it move on to the next one yes that sounds like a lot of work but you've got to remember you don't want dry polish in there or compound in there because you know it's gonna stick so keep your shit you got it so it's gonna keep your shit clean oh yeah rich is with me today because hey. it's sunday oh let's look at his mad beast from uh, a distance yeah. finally on from a distance what size are they nine and a half by 17s 17 by nine and a half yeah on his little mx5 it's no longer a bitch car nope it is now but we've got some major plans for it's it it's going to be super wide arches and chassis wings and you got it it's going to be fucking angry standard frackies he's fucking damn right we have got some mental shit coming in we really do so yeah this has got the compound on obviously it's all got to be like wiped off and whatnot so you know and then so we're going to have to do that and then detail it which is what rich is doing now so rich has got it up on axle stands wheels are all off we're going to wax the oil all the uh, arches all round before we put the arch liners in uh, and then we'll get all the wheels clean hoover everything out and obviously my dad's going to come and pick it up and i really really hope my mum likes it your mum will like it your dad's going to be super disappointed my dad what because he's, it's just he's a, always like that my dad's always <laughs> <laughs> we could have bought him a brand new showroom fresh mx5 and it would still would have been like it's kind of not right <laughs> yeah. so that's why we're, we're putting that effort in we're going that extra mile as we do for all our customers regardless of whether you're mum or not yeah just put that little extra work in indeed i just i can't get over how this thing is just you know popping and the reason there's a reason that i um I chose VOC and not liquid glass. Uh, basically, my parents live on a, um, a farm. So my uh, mother, for instance, is always up and down country lane. I mean, she's got a new Freelander um, and she would rather use the MX-5 than the Freelander. So I thought, right. Strong choice <laughs> from an MX-5 owner. It's just a more practical car. <laughs> so I thought, right, we need to go with a tough clear coat and it needs to be tough 
within a week or so. Um, because obviously clear coats take a while to cure. So we went with the VOC because the VOC, it, as it may not be as uh, pure, should we say, as liquid glass regarding clarity, but regarding durability, the VOC wins it. Like hands down, it's a true HS clear. You will not get a stone chip with this shit. No way. So anyway, that's enough talking. We'll get back, we'll time lapse this a little bit because you've seen me do it. Well, no, let's, no, no, no. I'll actually rest you up and you can watch, do this and I'll talk you through it. As you can see, we're back with Matty now and he's gonna actually talk you through his compounding procedure rather than uh, just chat and we're gonna show you how it works. Yes, indeed. So you don't need a lot, okay, um, of this shit. This is probably too much, if I'm honest. Um, and it just goes and goes and goes and goes. So, same with all the other compounds, but I do anyway. Start slow and you can see instantly how this shit turns. It turns to like a real smooth sort of liquid goodness. So, firm pressure, you can see I've got firm pressure on it anyway. And look, that's all, this is all we're going to do is just work that compound in. Right, that's the first step. Okay. And you were saying this isn't something that's sort of limited to professionals no, only? Is like... it, everything I do here, I may have the professional tools, but it's stuff you can do at home in your garage, including painting. You know, everyone knows on YouTube that I started it in my garage at home, so as you can see, we'll take off the excess. That's the excess. So now, build up the speed a bit more. Put that right there. Keep the pressure on. And you're literally just working it in, adding heat so the compound can do its thing. You can already see that shine starting to develop. You see Frankie's reflection up on the ramp there. Poor Frankie. Needs some loving. Yeah, we've got a major game plan for Frankie though, which is good. And there'll be another episode of Road to Nowhere to come soon. Right, arches, lips, everything like that. My rotor head spins that way. All right, so. We can get real close to those literally, lips. Literally, I just turn like that ever so slightly. You don't have to worry about picking up dirt and anything like that. No, and you don't have to worry. The thing is, if you go, and you know this, everybody on YouTube knows this, that if you go the other way, you're adding heat towards the arch. For instance, I mean, I can't go the other way. For me to go the other way, I've got to go upside down, which is dumb. And, and you'll burn the edges off. Uh, not necessarily with this setup, but you'll burn the edges off. So, and come back across on the other, up slightly higher and then go back again. And use the whole of the pad, all right? Use all of it. So like for here now, I'm gonna bring the pad slightly down like that so I can get the edge. And there you have it. We'll bring you a nice little pass in a moment as Matty wipes it off and, and you can see the, the finished product. Exactly. Uh, so yeah, they don't look that good, do they? So, we've got some reaction from Water Perfection. This stuff is insane. I absolutely love it. Literally, spray it on. We've diluted this as well, 50-50. Right, turn that one over. It's turning purple already. Um, you don't even have to agitate it. You can do, obviously, but... Oh, there we go. Oh. There we go, make all this lovely and mint. There we go, sir. Yeah. So, basically we'll let that do its thing. Um, and it can be rinsed off. Turn this one this way, because the fronts are going to be done. And then, uh, do you want to agitate them a little bit with yeah, something? Uh, should we just try a half and half and see how it comes off? You can give it a blast, mate. <laughs> No, 
chance it ends up being kind to them, but I mean, no. that's a half and half without agitation, that's not bad at all. Exactly. So we'll get a little brush, a little detail. Get a brush, yep, yeah, give them a little scrub, scrub, scrub. And then that's that done. Uh, we've got it running because obviously we've had to clean all the engine and the plastics and I'm going there with some uh, WD-40 or some white grease on all the components and then we'll dress the engine obviously in there cleaning all this out because we're going to wax the oil at all and then we'll put the arch liners back in so the body is polished and uh, obviously stripped of all of, there's no polish on it now whatsoever nothing right attention to detail at frankie's speed shop arch liners they've just all been blast tires their uh, wheels and stuff with the auto perfection reaction that's just been done we pressure washed all the engine bay um uh white grease and whatnot done and dusted so and now rich is just going around with a that's bit of a all-purpose dressing you can see the nice little 50 50 finish it's done to these black rubber hoses and i'm assuming you just like wipe yeah, it off just a, literally you don't need any expensive applicator pads or anything like that it's just a like a 99 piece sponge from tesco's that i've chopped up to use for the the cause and, and it then, spreads on nice and evenly and you just wipe it off dries with the gloss ah see i'd have used like a um, the dressing spray like yeah the, um, dashing well see so yeah, there's nothing nothing wrong with that but i mean i like just that nice little thick bit of gel has that sort of more of a lasting property than a, than a quick ah, spray. Well, he's doing that. We've done all inside the arches now. So now it's time to wax the oil everything, get it all together so my dad can come and pick it up. Right, there we go. One MX-5 painted, detailed, cleaned done and dusted i'm just waiting for that sun to come out there we go oh yeah that's there comes the sun here comes the sun no filters needed look at that that is fucking insane that looks so good there's nothing really to get a reflection shot off of. There's nothing here. So, probably get something off the boot maybe. I think so. Hang on, let's have a look. Ah, so so. But yeah, there we go. Oh man. How to paint your car, no matter where you are, what equipment you've got, we can do this here, you can do this at home. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share and comment. We'll make sure there's more videos coming soon from Frankie's Speed Shop.